Julian Fulton. This is take two of the Julian Fulton interview because what you folks at home did not know until this very moment is that take one was sabotaged, self <laughs> self sabotaged, if you will. The audio was lost. So we're going to give this another go. We're going to try again. Julian, I wanted to talk about second chances with you. <laughs> do you Perfect. Do you believe in second chances? This is my favorite kind of chance, uh, besides third. Cause, okay. Because some people, if, if you're not the most upright of people, you need a third chance. Um, you put out two EPs this year, mm -hmm. uh, Reverie and Noise. Um, if I recall, Reverie is a little bit lighter, maybe like a little, the songs are a bit simpler, the subject matter is like love and things like that. Mm -hmm. But the, the second one, Noise, uh, was a little bit more of a grander, concept behind some of the songs you're talking about bigger ideas like good and evil and and um, these existential concerns that you have um, uh, I was curious if there was something that happened in between the writing of those two records that uh, changed your approach I, th I think the biggest difference was um, 
there was, even though they were both released, probably like a month apart, not even, um, the songs on Reverie, which was released first, a lot of those had been written or partially recorded years and years before I even started Noise. Um, so on Reverie, there's a lot of songs that were written maybe when I was 14 mm -hmm. or that I started demoing like five, four, three years ago. So, so I was a different writer. Um, and then with Noise, all of that was, I, after I released Reverie, I just wanted to keep uh, releasing stuff that way. Uh, so I had the idea of just writing and recording an entire EP in mm -hmm. one month. So all those songs were written and recorded during that one month period. Um, you seem like a really hard worker, like to put out a, an EP in under a month to write, record, produce, you know, and distribute uh, a whole EP in under a month, and then coming right on the, the tail of this other one. Do you have perfectionist tendencies? Yeah, everyone's told me I do, so mm -hmm. it must be true. <laughs> well, I was curious because, you know, here we are doing our second take <laughs> of this interview, and uh, obviously, you know, I, I was feeling, I think we all were feeling down on ourselves for, um, for our screw up, right? But, um, but I, I remembered in our, uh, the other time we talked, we did touch on this idea of, of, uh, of perfection and things like that. And um, I don't know, I was curious if you ever think about like, where does that, where does that come from? Like, do you, do you ever think about that? I mean, like, I think there's a, f maybe, not a fear, but a, uh, an uneasiness about, I don't know if it's failure or, uh, or doing mediocre work. Why do we have that? I don't know. Um... Because it's not just you. I think yeah, yeah, yeah. The, all the people who make this show also feel that way. That's why you guys want to Why do, a do we do interview. that? Can you tell me what's wrong with us? <laughs> um, oh, man. You know, I don't, I don't know. Uh, the, thing, the thing is, is like, it's, it's not something that came to light to yeah. me until it was, it's been re reinforced by a lot of other people the past like five years, maybe this idea of me being perfectionist, and it's not something I was actually too aware of. Like, I kind of knew I was that way, but I kind of thought everyone was. Because you mentioned working on some of those songs for a few years. Yeah, yeah. that's the thing. It's like, what you, what you heard of one song, that might have been like the 10th re-recording of it. Like, right. I, I, I'll do that where I'll sit on a song for years and, yeah. and stuff, and I still, I have like 60 songs that no one's heard that I'm just sitting on or still tweaking like all the do time. Do you find that um, doing that, doing that, that that process, does it lead to better results? Or do you get to a point where you're looking at what you have and you say like, this is the 30th time I've done this song. I don't know if it's better. I know it's different. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, it does and it doesn't. I think that's part of why I wanted to try doing something different with like with the noise EP and just write and record in a month. It, it's like I gave myself very specific parameters. So even if I wanted to go back, I was like, no, you're not allowed. But the, I've I've kind of been that way even since I was little. Like I always took you know dioramas too far and, and <laughs> right. stuff. Yeah, right. school like, project. Yeah, it's like yeah, I, right. I never just threw it together. It's like it had to be a whole thing. It's like. <laughs> yeah, right. But, uh, you're up so, till three in the morning. You're in fourth grade. Yeah, I'm like this Captain shit. Underpants shit needs to be great. <laughs> needs to be perfect. And it's like nobody else would care. It's yeah. like some kid's gonna like practically fart in a box and get an A. And, <laughs> and I'm, I don't know why I'm doing this, but I've always been like that. I've I've never wanted to push something out that was yeah mediocre or unrepresentative of myself or what I wanted people to mm -hmm. to get out of what I was doing. It's been a little longer now since um, Noise came out. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you have coming up? Um, I'm looking to get into an actual studio and, and record an actual uh, studio EP and really release it and, and stuff. Uh, so I have, like I said, I have a million songs demo. So now, it's, and again, it's a problem of being a perfectionist of which songs are perfect for yeah. what songs do I want to represent me and what songs it's work not. together and all, all this different stuff. So I've been doing that and um, I'm hoping to release a couple more like, you know, home recorded singles or EPs in, mm -hmm. in the interim. But hopefully something within, you know, before the end of the year or early next year. Cool. Yeah. Great. Well, we'll be looking forward to it. Julian Fulton, thank you for a second uh, lovely interview. The first one was great, too. This one was great. Other one was great. <laughs> There's no knowing if this one was better <laughs> or just different. Um, but Julian Fulton, thank you. Thank you for having me. And we're going to hear you play another song.
Where does the time go? There's such a short window So before you draw your line in the sand Since you've clearly done all that you can Won't you help some lonesome to find love Since the pain inside is all you're thinking of Got nothing to lose, so why don't you choose a different kind of fool? You just might be the greatest thing you do. A tiny premonition has confirmed your suspicions But before you make one more excuse Or subject yourself to further abuse Won't you help some lonesome fool find love Since the pain inside is all your thing Just wishing he had done the very thing you're too afraid to do. The very thing you're too afraid to do. No matter what we say.
burnt strip. Come on, what are the two songs? Fucking you better have that. Whoever's in charge of that.